Hello, and welcome to the Weekly Rewind, presented by Attractions Magazine. I'm your host, Theron White, and this week we're going from Monday, May 22nd to Sunday, May 28th. Now, starting on Monday, we got to check out some of the Volcano Bay merchandise that was inside the Sapphire Falls gift shop. We'll talk a lot more about Volcano Bay later, but it's really cool to see their merchandise early. If you love that tiki theme, you're totally going to love all the things they have for sale. Moving on to Tuesday, we got to see the first look inside the queue of the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout ride in Disneyland. Now we get to see this awesome Cosmo the Space Dog, one of the cutest animatronics Disney has ever made. Again, we're going to talk more about this a little bit later, but it's great to see this little sneak peek that they gave us early in the week. Continuing on Tuesday, we got to look at a few pictures inside the new Cabana Bay Beachside Towers. This specifically was a two-bedroom suite looking right over into the beautiful Volcano Bay. So not only does this have a really nice suite area and more of a, like a, a value moderate style um, room but you have an incredible view you're very close to it if you're going specifically for volcano bay this is going to get you hyped up for it and you'll be able to look at it all day even if you have to take a rest you're very close to the entrance of the resort on Wednesday was the official grand opening ceremony for Pandora, the world of Avatar. Stars and filmmakers of Avatar got to come and check out the land and have a big ceremony kind of opening this incredible new expansion at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Bob Iger was there as well for the grand opening as they had an incredible ceremony where drummers came out and they had a small assembly where they assembled a big banshee like up on the stage. Then the media got to go all around, try out all the incredible attractions, go to the store, eat the food, and just explore this amazing land. Continuing on Wednesday, we posted an overview video of Volcano Bay, the water theme park at Universal Orlando Resort. Now you can see here the very, very big volcano that they have, some of the slides, the beaches, how to use the Tapu Tapu, which is like their version of the magic band that helps with their virtual queue system. Um, it's just, it seems like it's a really amazing water park. People seem to really love it. So definitely check that out. See for yourself. I know if you're a Universal Pass holder, I think it was $99 to be able to add it to your pass. Uh, so if you're a big water park fan and you want to add it, it's definitely been claimed as one of the best water parks here in Florida. Ending Wednesday, we got our first look at a fully lit up Pandora at night with all the bioluminescent plants and the lit up mountains. And oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. After filming this episode today, I'm actually leaving, driving straight to Animal Kingdom and waiting. I don't even care how long of amount of time because I'm going just to see this. I was there at the grand opening yesterday and we'll, we'll see that in a few minutes, but I uh, was not able to attend at night. So I'm coming back literally just tonight just to see the bioluminescent plants. I will wait hours and hours just to see this because alone, even from just the pictures, it's amazing. And I was told it's even better in person. So I'm incredibly excited. And as you can see from here, you can see why you could be excited as well. Then on Thursday was the official grand opening ceremony for Volcano Bay. They had an awesome ceremony where a tribe came out, played some music, uh, sang some songs, and then the park was open. Pass holders, uh, ticket holders, anyone who wanted to come in got to go in and enjoy the park. The line did get quite long, up to a 360-minute return time for some crack, for the Krakatoa Aqua Coaster. But remember, it's not really a line. It's just like a return time. So you can say, hey, I want to ride this ride. And then you leave, go swim in the lazy river, go to the pool, just play with all the waves, go get some food, lay by the beach, tan, and then you get to come back and jump right on your ride. So while it seems like a while, it's, again, it's really a return time and not a wait time. So in that way, it makes the lines not seem that bad. Lastly, on Thursday, our reporter Patrick went to go check out the Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. You can see him here looking at the new facade of the building. It looks very interesting. Some people say they love it. Some people say they don't. I definitely think it at least matches Guardians of the Galaxy. Like, it has that crazy, bright-colored theme. We've been told from so many people that have been able to try it that they like it better than the Tower of Terror. I think that's crazy. It must be one heck of an attraction because I know how many people love the Tower of Terror. So one day, hopefully, I can go and check this out as soon as possible. I'd love to be able to see it for myself, but I just know that I'm excited and it looks really cool. Congratulations to the whole team that worked on it. On Friday, two brand new shows premiered at Disney's Hollywood Studios. The first was the music of Pixar Live. Now this is going to have an orchestra where you get to go and they do like iconic music and scenes from different Pixar movies and the characters come out, reenact some of those scenes, kind of talk, dance, and like it's just a really cool show, approximately 45 minutes long. Uh, this is just going to be a preview that you can see online that we posted, but you should definitely check it out for yourself. I've always wanted to see an orchestra like live and like for any reason for any kind of music so it's really nice that it's going to be free technically like if you're in the park it's free um, and especially because it's going to be based off of a lot of the Pixar films so that's already going to make sure that I love the music and then get to see it for a fairly long show which is really nice 
The second show was the brand new Disney Movie Magic projection show that happens right before Star Wars A Galactic Spectacular. This happens directly on the Great Movie Ride. It's projected onto it like Star Wars A Galactic Spectacular is. And you can see different scenes from a lot of live action films. So we had some from Guardians of the Galaxy, a quick one from Mary Poppins. Of course they have the iconic castle like you see at the beginning of all Disney films. And then I am a massive fan of Tron and Tron Legacy. So to see just even a picture from that, I was like, nope, not watching this. I'm seeing it in person. I don't know how long that scene is. It could be two seconds, but I'm going to lose my mind because Tron Legacy is projected onto the great movie ride, and I'm sure it has an iconic sound or music from it. Either way, I am going to see this so soon. Everyone who saw it said it was a great addition to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Really kind of grounds the night in that whole movie theme. And it's a great that it was like awesome surprise. We didn't even know it was coming. And it, it seems like it's going to be a permanent thing now right before Galactic Spectacular. So a really great addition. If you're not as big of a Star Wars fan and you just want to go for some fireworks, first you can see this with all the Disney films, see some Star Wars and some fireworks all at the same time and have a great end to your night at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Then, on Saturday, was the opening of Pandora, the World of Avatar. Now, this was the official opening. All annual pass holders, ticket holders, anyone who wanted to go could come to Animal Kingdom. They opened at 7 a.m. for extra magic hours and 8 a.m. for everyone else. So I arrived there right at 7 a.m., waited the extra hour going through the security checks and getting the tickets and everything through, so I was able to wait in line. It really confused me because that's the first time ever that I scanned my magic band and they didn't require you to do a fingerprint scanner. I don't know if they do that a lot on busy days and I just like haven't noticed but it was weird because I was I went to scan my finger and it turned green and they said go and I know they were trying to get in these massive crowds so I'm sure they just like bypassed that for a day but anyway so it was very cool to see and rush in there with everyone else uh, then once we were officially in the land we saw this sign after only about two hours inside Pandora this was the due to high demand. Pandora is accepting only a limited number of travelers. That is correct. There was a time in the day, numerous times during the day, that they had to shut the entrance and hold people outside until they were able to lower the capacity inside the park and get some people out so they could allow more visitors in to check it out. We also were able to keep you some updates about the, the wait times throughout the day. Uh, this is just one that we had posted saying there was a 150 minute wait for Navi River Journey, a 250 minute wait for Flight of Passage, and just to get into Pandora was almost an hour. As I was leaving that night, excited guests were entering Pandora. I got some video of them. Some of them waited almost an hour and a half just to get into Pandora. Then they got to wait again for whether it was going into the shop or something else. And I know I'm saying the word waiting a lot. Don't take this as me complaining. I actually think the whole operations crew, everyone from attractions, merchandise, custodial, photo pass, every single person there, I was very, very impressed with. It's the opening of a land. Like if you're not expecting a couple hours of wait for everything, then he really honestly should not have gone. So I went in there expecting long, long hours for everything because so many people want to experience this. And we got on Flight of Passage in three hours, which to me, I thought that was pretty good. Like, I mean, this is a major E-level attraction. It, is our, it has become now my favorite Disney, or really any parks ride. Because uh, I've ridden it once before, rode it a second time yesterday to confirm, and it is. It's it's un like undescribable. You'll know if you ride it why it's so incredible. Like it's not just a soaring, it's not just another simulator. It's so stinking good. It is you are real, you are hooked up to your avatar and you are flying on the back of a banshee. So that's why I was willing to wait for, you know, all that stuff. I also got to try like the the mobile ordering on the app. Definitely do that. The line to get like food regular was 45 minutes. I mobile ordered and got it in three minutes. So definitely update your apps. Get that ready and, and do that if you're going to be inside Pandora. But as I was saying, yeah, I left and we there was all these excited guests just coming in. So ready to explore Pandora. And it was nice because they had multiple exits for you to get out to. I'm going to try the uh, one that goes to like Harambe today. Because they said that's got a pretty cool bridge going over. But... Awesome for those guests to be able to enter. And later that night, we were able to show off Pandora. At night, we had some footage of the entire land. As I said, I'm not going to look at this too much. I know it's already beautiful. So you'll be able to see it. We use like a low light camera so you can see exactly how your eyes are going to see. And it's even just from the photos. I'm obviously having to see some of this to post it for the weekly rewind. But just like even the limited, limited bits, gets, gets, you got to be so excited for this. The land truly transforms at night and just becomes a whole different area. Just undescribable, unlike anything that any park has ever done before. 
Moving on to Sunday, Daycation Kingdom is having a ton of fun exploring the Art of Animation Resort. While I don't know exactly what their bit is going to be about this week, you know it's going to be on their vlog and you know it's going to be a ton of fun. So make sure to check that out on their next vlog. And ending on Sunday, we had this fun tribute to the former Twister attraction inside one of the windows outside of the Jimmy Fallon Race to New York attraction. All about the Twister Cola, the real cool choice. So if you're a big fan of the Twister ride and you want to see some of the shout outs back to it, definitely go check that out next time you are at Universal. And that is it for this week's episode of The Weekly Rewind. Thank you so much for watching. And I will ask, we have now shown off Volcano Bay. We have shown off Pandora and Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. If you had unlimited fast pass and you could jump on any one attraction at any of these parks, what would it be? We have the Krakatawa drop coaster over at Volcano Bay. Uh, that one's really crazy, like a 200 foot drop through a, you know, like the tube slime. We have Flight of Passage. We have the Navi River Journey. We have Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. For all these different sections, you have one card that gets you immediately onto anything. No need to have to worry about it. Where would you go and what would you do? Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I hope you guys have an incredible week. Bum, 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 Man, I know.